confused about the XP range of search coils? Well, hopefully this video will help you understand them a little bit better. We all like to think bigger coils are the deepest coil but that kind of depends on the target size and we get there in a little while. So let's have a talk about the advantages of the bigger coil. Okay, they probably are deeper on bigger targets providing the ground conditions suit. Let me explain. If you're using a big coil and you've got lots of targets close to each other, you're not gonna have good target separation and this is what the smaller coil offers. The bigger coils are a bigger aerial, therefore, they may attract more EMI, electromagnetic interference. Now, one of the biggest advantages of the big coil is you've got a much bigger footprint. You're covering more ground. It really is dictated by your desired target and your terrain. Would a big coil be any deeper on average size coins? Probably not. You're not gonna notice a big difference. Well, the 9-inch X35 coil, what's the advantages? As I spoke about a minute ago, target separation. If there's lots of targets closer together, this will be a better choice of coil because it's smaller and it can get in between targets. A smaller coil will be much better at searching difficult terrain, such as undergrowth, areas where there's lots of rocks, the list goes on. So think about where you're searching. Would you be able to get a big coil in between these items? Nine times out of 10, your smaller coil will be a better choice. The ground effect. If the coil sees a lot of mineralized ground at once, it's difficult to determine a good target. So the smaller coils will see less ground, therefore making a better, more precise operation. Right, so that is my little talk about large versus small search coils. However, if you can't make your mind up, why don't you go for middle of the road, the 11 inch coil. This has got a little bit of everything. Let's have a little talk about X35 versus the HF coil. When we're talking about X35 coils, we've got five main frequencies, four kilohertz, seven kilohertz, 11 kilohertz, 17 kilohertz, and 28 kilohertz. Now, each frequency has got seven wide offsets, making 35 frequencies. And this is where the term X35 comes from. We need to break things down a little bit regarding the HF coil and the X35 coil. Each of them has got its own designated specialist frequency. Let's call it a specialist frequency just to help you better understand it. The X35 coils have got the mid-range frequencies touching on a higher frequency, but I'd say its specialist frequency is the low frequency, the four kilohertz. Now, you're really only going to use the four kilohertz when you're searching for a specific target. And also I've found the lower frequencies work really, really well using the dais in the all metal mode. Now, another advantage of using the four kilohertz with the X35 coils and using the dais, remember, you've got a boost mode where you can boost the power when you're in four kilohertz, just to give you that little bit extra depth. The ORX doesn't have the boost mode, although you can use all the frequencies on the ORX. Iron identification, well, in particular, large iron. The lower frequencies identify the bigger iron much better than the higher frequencies, but there's a twist to this, and I'll get to that in a little while. So that is my quick talk on the X35 coils. Let's have a quick chat about the high frequency coils. In the past, high frequency machines have always been more specific for gold hunting in their natural environment, mineralized ground. But XP, due to coil construction techniques, have made your high frequencies very, very usable. So what frequencies do these HF coils run on? Well, they start at 14 kilohertz, mid-range is 30 kilohertz, and then this one's the round nine inch, it goes up to 55, whereas your elliptical, that goes up to 80 kilohertz. 
So let's talk about the round HF coil. Where does that fit in the XP range and how would it help your searching? Well, the 14 kilohertz is a good all round frequency. You can find small and large targets with this at reasonable depths. And then you start moving up to the 30 kilohertz frequency, which is gonna give you pretty good iron separation between small targets and small nails. And then you go up to the 50 kilohertz and it's gonna be absolutely awesome on your tiny targets, such as your small hammer coins on edge, your small Roman coins, small artifacts, especially the little fibula brooches and things like that. 50 kilohertz is surprisingly stable, but you might not wanna use it all the time. I'm gonna now show you a little video on how effective this HF coil is using the different frequencies to separate small targets and iron. This next test uses a simple pop rivet. Why do I choose a pop rivet? Well, it's got a non-ferrous disc at one end and the bar through the middle of it is ferrous. So, let's see if the machine can sort out the non-ferrous from the ferrous. First of all, we're gonna try the non-ferrous side using 14 kilohertz. It gets lost around six centimeters. Now the ferrous end. As you can hear, it's a low tone. Now the 54 kilohertz. That's a big difference. As you can see, it's off the scale. If you want to see that complete video, I'll post the links below. So I'm sure you can now see the advantages of using those higher frequencies, especially if you've got an ancient site. So now we move on to the HF elliptical coil. As you can see, it's got a smaller footprint so it can get right in between that iron. And also highly mineralized ground isn't affecting it quite as much as the bigger coils. A perfect coil for nugget hunting, but also a great coil for your ancient sites when you just want to whittle out the small targets. Now, a lot of people say RHF coils deeper than X35 coils, and that's a very, very good question. If you take a very, very small target buried in the ground, your X35 coil might not even get it, whereas your HF coil will. So therefore, it is a deeper coil in this instance. I'm gonna show you a little video now where we've done a test on a small buried coin and we run through the frequencies. See what you think. This machine is running 18 kilohertz. This machine is running 50 kilohertz. Now we're just gonna run over this buried target and let you hear what the two machines sound like. First of all, the 50 kilohertz. Lovely signal, repeatable. Right, now the 18 kilohertz. Just getting a little whisper on this one. Bearing in mind everything's exactly the same, day is fast, we just changed the frequencies. Let's put this one aside for a moment. I'm just gonna run down the frequencies on this. I'm gonna go from 50, 28, 14. Twenty eight point eight fourteen. We've lost it back up to twenty eight. Signals back in and fifty kilohertz. So that's demonstrated the advantages of a high frequency coil. Now, what was the buried target? Let me dig it up and show you what it was. 
I think you'll be amazed at the size of this target and the depth it was buried at. Look at that, that's a Celtic Minim, a tiny Celtic Minim. And that's about five inches deep. When you buy an additional search coil, it will come supplied with a lower stem and fixing kit. So that's my little talk about XP coil choices. Now, if you're still trying to choose what coil to have with your machine, my advice is don't beat yourself up over this because it doesn't matter what coil you choose, it'll always be in the back of your mind, I wish I'd have chosen the other coil. And at a later date, I pretty much guarantee you, you will go for another coil because all the coils complement each other and buying an extra coil is still cheaper than buying a new detector.